Good morning and welcome. It is Friday. It is the Mancunian way. It is 7 a.m. And you know what that means. It is the City Daily News in 10 here on the Mancunian way. Happy weekend. It is nearly upon us. It is that Friday feeling that we all have ready for the weekend, ready for that game against Liverpool on Sunday. Going to be a cracker of a game. Can't wait. Hopefully, some of you Blues feeling a bit more optimistic coming into this game on Sunday. But what we're going to do this morning is I'm just going to run through because I do apologise. Start off, there was no daily news in town on Thursday morning, like I said, due to family reasons. But there is this one on today morning, Friday, 14th of October. We're back again. So I'm going to give you Wednesday's Champions League results. I'm going to give you last night's Europa League results. And also the fixtures coming up this weekend in the Premier League. So let's kick straight on into Wednesday night's Champions League games of Napoli 4, Ajax 2. And Rangers 1, Liverpool 7 in that Group A. Where obviously Napoli, absolutely great guns there over in Naples. Smashing Ajax four goals to two. Goals from Lozano, Raspadora, Cavatas Valia, wherever his name is, and uh, Ossimen as well. And Klassen and uh, Stephen Bergwijn getting a late consolation from the penalty spot for Eric Ten Hag's former men. Obviously, the Liverpool game at Ibrox, um, it started so well. Started so well. Through where uh, Arfield's goal in the 70th minute, and then yeah, it went downhill. Mo Salah came on and got an hat trick in six minutes, five minutes, six minutes. And even Darwin Nunes scored. You can tell you're having a bad day when Darwin Nunes bags. Let's go to Group B Atletico Madrid nil, Club Bruges nil, and then Bayer Leverkusen nil, Cl uh, FC Porto three. So a great win there for the uh, Portuguese club over in Germany. Group C finished Barcelona 3 in Milan and the massive surprise is Barcelona are now out of this season's Champions League. That is the massive news coming out of Wednesday night's game this week. Barcelona are out of the Champions League despite Dembele and Lewandowski with a brace. Yeah, not good, not good at all. Barella Martinez and Goosens getting the three goals in the camp. Spotify camp new, but they are literally, I mean, at the moment they are rock. I mean, let's just have a look. They're, they're third in the group on four points. Bayern Munich are 12 points. Inter Milan are seven. You've got in, by Barcelona on four points. It ain't good enough. Ain't good enough at all. Um, Victoria Pilsen, Bayern Munich, it finished 4 2. To the Bavarian side, Munich. So well done to Bayern Munich. They are through as well. Group D, Sporting Lisbon nil, Marseille two, Tottenham Hotspur. <coughs> the strange game this one because Tottenham, funnily enough, went behind very early in this game through Kamada, but then uh, Sun Hung Min came back with uh, a brace. In between was a Harry Kane PK penalty kick. Making it 3 1 to the uh, the Lily Whites, the Spuds, whatever you want to call them. But obviously, what happened is Mello got himself sent off just before the hour mark to give Tottenham that one man advantage. And eventually, though, funnily enough, though, 10 stopping with 10 men, Tottenham foot off the gas, and Shaq Frankfurt did pull a goal back through uh, Ali Du in the 87th minute. But it was not enough for the German team, Sadler and Tottenham get away with all three points. Now, what I will do is just give you a little brief update of where that leaves everything. Tottenham are currently top of the group D at the moment on seven points. Marseille with six, Sporting with six. Frankfurt, four points, even though they have done themselves probably quite proud ahead. Um, I was giving you, by the way, group A at the moment. Napoli are through maximum points, four from four, 12 points. Liverpool, second on nine. Looks like they're on their way through despite a very dodgy start and a poor campaign in the Premier League so far. Ajax, third, and Rangers are going bye-bye out of Europe altogether, it looks like, despite it was going to take a miracle for them to get back. We then move on to last night's games. 
in the Europa League. Arsenal winning 1-0 at Bode Glimt. You had PSV Eindhoven winning 5-0 in Zurich in, in uh, Group A and Group B. Um, we have uh, Fenerbahce winning 2-1 at AEK AEK Larnikov, yeah, teeth back in. Uh, Dynamo Kiev got beat 1 0 against FC Ren, Rene, or Rens, as it's also properly pronounced. Real Betes drew 1 1 each with Roma. We have Lugre Sarazagred 2 0 against HJK Helsinki. Group D was Union State Gilouise with two, uh, three all drawn against Sporting Braga. Entertaining game that one in Group D. FC Union Berlin beat FF Malmo 1 0 as well. Group E, it took a 90th minute winner, 93rd minute injury time winner from the old McTominay for United to get a um, a win over Omi, um, Omino Nicosia. So, yeah, United. Up and down season for them. They're not that great at the minute. They're just scraping the barrel to get through at the minute. And they played a strong team as well. Don't think that was a weak and down team. They played a bloody good, strong team as well, which included uh, Ronaldo. Uh, Real Sociedad, David Silva's boy, stepped up against Sheriff Tiraspol with a 3-0 convincing home win. Group F was final to FC Midland, as some Manchester City fans will remember some blues. Old FC Midland, we did like them in the old uh, UEFA Cup as it was back then. Lazio 2, SK Strum Grass 2. And then Group G was FK Garabag 0, Olympiacos 0. Nantes 0, or Nante as it should be properly pronounced, 0. SC Freiburg 4. Then there was um, Ferin Var- Faraskia 2. The pronunciations are getting a bit better. Red Star Belgrade 1. And then Thomas Sport for Monaco 0. And that takes us nicely into this weekend's fixtures. We have got a packed, packed Premier League calendar this weekend. <coughs> I do apologise about that. Some match day 9, some some match day 10 for others. We'll give you the lowdown. <coughs> I do apologise, tickling me throat. It all kicks off tonight. <coughs> <coughs> tonight with Brentford at home to Brighton and Hove Albion at the uh, Brentford Community Stadium. It is Brentford hoping to get themselves I have a little bit of a sticky patch, topsy-turvy patch at the moment, but they want to get three points in the mag against a good going Brighton and Hove Albion side at the moment. We then move on to Saturday's game. The early kickoff 12.30 is Brendan Rodgers Foxes last to center. Take on Patrick Vieira's Eagles from the uh, King Power Stadium. Fulham are at home to FC Bournemouth in the three o'clock kickoff. Wolverhampton Wanderers managerless so far. I'm not sure they've actually brought anyone in yet. Against Nottingham Forest as well at three o'clock. And Forest have had a few little changes over the last few days. Their recruitment team has actually had the bin. They're sacked. They're gone. No, not the manager. Their recruitment team. One or two of their major head recruiters were binned off during the week. Not doing a good job. I think they brought in like 26,000 players and, yeah, not very good. So, at the moment, for Knox Forest, despite with a, a good 1-1 draw against uh, Stephen Gerrard's Aston Villa. Slippy G's at it again. And then the late, late kickoff on Saturday is not Tottenham Hotspur against... Frank Lampard's toffees. Let's hope Spurs don't find themselves in a sticky patch come 7.30 on Saturday evening when they take on Everton at the new White Hart Lane. We then go on to Sunday. Massive afternoon of football. Now, all these games, apart from our game at 2 o'clock kickoffs. speaking of Slippy G, they take on Chelsea. Graham Potter's rejuvenated Chelsea boys at... Villa Park at 2 o'clock. Leeds United take on Arsenal from Ellen Road at 2 o'clock. The big game that I'm really looking forward to, actually. The game I'm looking forward to watching is going to be the United-Newcastle game at 2 o'clock. The United game against Newcastle will be very, very intriguing. High-flying tune at the moment. Tune armour. Eddie Howe's got his boys flying down up there at the tune. And up against the topsy-turvy United team, who at the moment are scraping wins and they're showing a little bit of um, bit of metal, a bit of grit at the moment. 
which is something that was sadly missed over the last few years, that little bit of resiliency, that bounce-back factor that you probably need to uh, get yourself going up the Premier League table. We've then got Liverpool, um, not Liverpool, we don't have Liverpool, we have the Saints, who didn't go marching in at the Etihad, they went marching down Southampton against West Ham United. It is the Saints against the Irons. David Moyes' Irons, and that will be from, is it, what's it called now? Is it the Southampton Stadium, the Friends Provident? I can't remember what it's, St Mary's, St Chris, I don't know what it's called anymore, the Southampton Stadium, but Southampton are at home, two o'clock, West Ham United, Sunday, and then it's the big one. Well, I'm saying it's the big one. I don't personally think it is the big one. Oh, a massive game as it has been in the past because Liverpool, for me, are title challenges this season. It's Liverpool at home, at Anfield. The, the atmospheric, the unbridled, the un, the absolutely amazing Anfield to take on Manchester City. <laughs> Can't wait. To watch Erling Haaland roar all over Anfield. Cannot wait. But yeah, that's another 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 thing for another time. Let's hope that doesn't come back to bite me in the face. Clip that, clip that. Someone's clipped it. That's going out. Liverpool, Manchester City, half past four Sunday. We will be live with a post-match around 9 p.m. on Sunday evening here on the Mancuni Way. Make sure you are live and tuning in for us for that one. There may be a bit, a bit of a surprise beforehand. Just make sure you're following us at Horsey City on Twitter. You might get a little bit of announcement Sunday. Depends on one or two things falling into place. But just keep an eye on that one. Um, can't guarantee anything at the moment, but we're just trying to sort a few things around. Half past four, Liverpool, Manchester City. Post-match, definitely at nine o'clock on Sunday. So that will be a cracking one. And also, if you're interested... Manchester City women take on Leicester City women from uh, the Academy Stadium at two o'clock in the FA Women's Super League. So that is all your results, fixtures, everything you need to know up to date, heading in from the back end of this week, straight into this weekend. It is going to be a football bonanza this weekend and we'll have it all here for you on the Mancunian Way. Have a wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. The daily news in back the 10 is not back now till Monday morning at 7 a.m. Thank you for your patience. If you've not hit that subscribe button, please do. If you've not give it a thumbs up, please do. Share it around. And also, go and show all our helpers, our, our people who come on the channel a lot of love, like Xander, Man City Status 1 on Twitter, and Vader Games TV. Go and show him a love. He should be getting to 500 subscribers as soon as possible because he does some amazing content. Go and give Vader Games a lot of love as well as all Manchester City contributors out there. Amazing, amazing. We love you all. And I tell you what, it's great to be a blue. Have a fantastic weekend. See you soon. Oh, if you've got a minute, come in, come in, come here. Closer. Go and watch our post-match from last night. Manchester City, Liverpool. And we also talk a little bit of Arsenal as well. Go back and watch it. Yeah, you, you there. Go and watch it. See you later, Blues. Have a good one.